Jerry, yeah, man, what a performance. Pretty much just forced performance you can ever get, man. Yeah. Moved to 5 and 0. How was that, man? How? Oh, it was amazing. Um, so, yeah, it went like perfect. Like, that's you couldn't, you couldn't, uh, yeah, you couldn't script it any better than that. It was amazing. Um, I got the takedown. I can't even remember how I got the takedown. Was, do you remember? I don't know. It's just a blur. It's like, it happened pretty quick. I just, um, yeah, I just remember throwing elbows and then seeing blood splurt all over the mat and I was like, oh yeah, and like you never get to do that in training like I said, like um so that was a, a new experience and I was like, oh man, I think um yeah I think I can elbow this guy to a finish and then um, yeah I got the TKO which is best case scenario. First round TKO was like my my uh perfect case scenario. But I was ready for a three round war like I had that in my mind. Um, uh, he's tough like you know I think he was a bit upset with the stoppage and that he would have kept going um, and I would have gladly obliged I was um, having a lot of fun in there with the, with the ground and pound getting to actually hit someone properly with that ground and pound because like in training you just can't you can't do that without losing a lot of uh, friends and training partners so um, yeah it was like a new experience for me and um, I was having a lot of fun in there well, look, you displayed a really well-rounded skill set out there, showing you know excellent patience in your striking, good wrestling, and good control on the ground. But I think the biggest thing you showed out there was the patience in your skill set. You didn't just you know jump on a finish or jump on the strikes. Do you think that that sort of patience is just coming as you progress through your professional yes, career? Yes, yeah, I used to um, hunt for the submission. Um, just coming from a jiu-jitsu background, just the progression of, of my uh, journey, like just coming from a, a strictly BJJ background. Um, when it comes to groundwork, I'm just always thinking about jiu-jitsu, like take the back, put the hooks in, try to get the choke. And I've just completely um, reinvented myself at this camp, um, changed my mindset, especially after the last fight going five rounds. Um, couldn't get the finish, I was getting tired, I was gassing my arms out, going for arm triangles. I was losing positions on arm bars and he was coming on top. I lost the back, I fell off the back. Like all these jiu-jitsu techniques um, that I was trying just led me to like bad positions and getting tired. So um, I've completely reinvented myself and I've decided to, you know, let my hands go a bit more on the ground, my elbows go, until they're willing to give up, until they give me a submission. And even then I'm tempted not to jump on it because, I don't know, people, yeah, people might still, you know, they might still escape and you might lose a position. So why take the risk? The risk to reward is just not there. Um, that's sort of something I've just uh, realized. So. Like, I was happy just punching him in that position until whatever, like, uh, the ref stopped it, but if the ref didn't stop it, I'd just keep going for another whatever minute and a half, and then we'd go again. Next round, same thing, like, uh, so yeah, it's a complete change and a shift in my, in my game. Yeah, for sure, and you just kind of talked about how you reinvented yourself this camp. Are you looking to keep that momentum going and get back in there soon, or are you looking to take a little bit of time off? Um, that's, uh, yeah, I, I gotta, you know, assess a few things, like, we got, um, we got twins on the way, like I said, um, in the post fight interview, so that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, we gotta look at buying a house and a few things that in life that we gotta we gotta sort out first. But um, yeah, like uh, I'd be I'd be keen to fight again in like uh, late December or something. Um, we'll see what's see what's out there, and um, there's a few other competitions as well that I'm really interested in. Just to stay active, I I, I want to stay active because um. You just, you know, you stay sharp when you're active. So I definitely want to stay active, whether it's MMA or grappling or, or boxing or, um, yeah, exploring, exploring all avenues just to make sure I stay active. Steve, one more thing for me, man. Just, um, you're obviously quite emotional in the cage after, pretty impressive speech there as well. I'm um, just wondering, man, how, how do you use your kind of family as, I guess, um, your motivation for going into fights like, like tonight? Um, it puts things into perspective, like, uh, like uh, this is my dream, but this means nothing in comparison to family, like, the, these are the important things. Um, yeah, yeah, I, lo I love my family, I'm so blessed, I have an uh, amazing family and, and a wife, uh, she's, she's absolutely amazing, I'm the luckiest man on earth, and uh, we've got twins coming, and we've got little Sunny already, like, um, yeah, these are the important things, this is, this is, uh, this is just um, secondary, the family comes first. Man, it's a privilege, man. Thanks so much for your time. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it.